competition. It's really a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, the surgical procedure is new. It's Ozaki procedure. So let's start from the beginning. The goal treatment of aortic regurgitation or aortic stenosis is the surgical replacement of the aortic valve. The guidelines say so. But there is still room for aortic valve repair. Uh, these are the masters of aortic valve repair, El Huri, uh, Tyron David, Mehdi Yakup, and Emmanuel Lansak. You can see the ring used for annular dilatation, which is implanted subaortically and devised by Emmanuel Lansak. It's, a, it's really a great idea. I think there is much more room for aortic valve repair. All it starts with Carlos Duran. Carlos Duran released his uh, results of aortic valve repair. Uh, by telling aortic valve repair, I mean recreating the aortic valve with, with pericardial patches. He released his uh, long-term results for more than 100 patients in, in 2004. The results were really excellent. He published 15, year resu 15 years reoperation rate no more than 50%, which is really excellent, which is the result which, which we cannot have with uh, by prosthetic valves. But the problem about the Carlos Duran's technique was it was not reproducible, but the technique and Carlos Duran inspired many other cardiac surgeons. One of them was Ozaki. So what's the problem with small aortic root in, in case of aortic valve replacement? There is real a risk of patient prothesis mismatch. You have to use a biological valve. You have to be, you, you don't need to use an anticoagulant, but when you're using a commercially, commercially available aortic valve by, by a prosthesis, there's a, a problem of durability, and the cost is also important. Dr. Sheriff just mentioned Stirless valve, but they are quite expensive. Life with warf warfarin is like going around with a roller coaster. You may have thromboemboli, you may have cranial hemorrhage, you have to pay regular visits to the physicians for your INA, INR check, blah, blah. So it's not quite easy to live with warfarin. So we have to find something biological. Recently released guidelines says that uh, we, you, in, in selected cases, you can even offer your patient who is 50 years old, a biological solution or biological valve uh, in selected cases. So what's the problem with AVR? As I, as I mentioned before, patient protest mismatch is quite high. Uh, in Turkey, it's around 30 to 40. They released the whole STS database recently. Um, around They released a data of around 60,000 patients, and the uh, results were really striking. 96% uh, of the patients were used by a prosthesis. The results are striking in terms of patient prosthesis mismatch. Severe patient prosthesis mismatch was encountered in 11% and moderate 55, 54%, which altogether may, uh, uh, makes around 65 or something like that. This is the state's database, which is really striking. The point is that if you have a severe patient prosthesis mismatch, you have 10-year mortality of 32, and the readmission to hospital for chronic heart failure is around 37. If it's moderate patient prosthesis mismatch, 10-year mortality is 8%, and readmission is 15%. So we have to do something. We have to do something new, and we have to, do, we have to improve our surgical technique. So how, how we can do it, or how do I do in my clinic? Uh, first of all, preoperative aortic annulus diameter measurement with echo or with CT scan is very important. You are get prepared for the what to do in the operating room. Will you do an aortic enlargement, root enlargement, blah, blah. So you, so you have to decide the best valve before the operation, uh, considering the patient prothesis mismatch charts. Uh, intraoperative sizing is important. I always, as you all do, put a supravalvular, supraannular aortic valve and use small pelagids and do the sizing after I put the pelagid stitches. 
we have to be more liberal for using root enlargement and aortoplasty. In case of double aortic valve replacement, it's really hard to enlarge the aortic root. This is an Apple Android application, Cardio Valve. You can easily uh, give the body surface area of the patient and choose the valve, which valve you will use. Uh, you can, the application easily shows you the best valve size, valve type, uh, without patient protest mismatch. I strongly advise you this application. So what are, we ch what are the choices for small aortic root? You can put a uh, top hat uh, in the supranular position or a crown in the supranular position. Solo stentless valve is a very good option. You can put a stirless valve or TAVI. The next option is Ozaki procedure. Ozaki did his first operation in 2007 and released his three years results after that for 200 patients. The results were really striking. Uh, after three years, only two patients had mild aortic regurgitation. So what do we need for Ozaki? The problem was with the Carlos Duran technique, it was not reproducible. But Ozaki reproduced the technique, put it into a good algorithm so everyone can do it. This is the Ozaki set. First, you need a valve sizer. You need templates to cut the pericardium. You need that stuff to keep the uh, pericardium into the gluteal aldehyde solution. At the very beginning of the operation, you cut a very generous uh, pericardium, trim it, clean it, put it into a gluteal aldehyde solution with dilution of 0.6%, which is very important. You keep it in that gluteal aldehyde solution for 10 minutes and rinse five times just to make it clean. You need a sizer. Sizer is the most, most important part Oza of Ozaki. You need, you need to size every cusp with uh, precisely underneath the commissures. Then after you size the whole each valve uh, separately. You just cut the pericardium from the templates and you suture each valve cusp with 4 prolen and reinforce them with another prolen at the commercial part. You see, I call it lazy Mercedes. Uh, Dr. Ozaki call it Windrose, but look how it looks. Very good, very high, very wide coaptation length with Ozaki procedure. This is the overview small illustration of the Ozaki view, Ozaki operation. It can be used for tricuspid valve as well as bicuspid valve. You first harvest the pericardium, clean it, trim it, at the very beginning of the operation, before course clamp, You use the smooth part at the ventricular level. Then you put it into gluteal aldehyde solution and keep it there for 10 minutes. The point is that gluteal aldehyde diluted up to 0.6%. Then you aggressively resect the aortic cusps. You put the sizer, just mark at the very narin, at the very base of the cusp. You do the same for all three cusps. Sizing is the most important part of Ozaki. After you sized and marked the base of the uh, commissures, uh, you just cut it with the templates from the pericardium the diaphragmatic side is the thickest part. You s then you start uh, suturing with 4 prolen. At the very base of the aortic valve, you the ratio of stitching distance is 1 to 3.
then as, as you come close to the uh, upper part, the ratio is one to one. Then the stitches come off of, come out of the aorta and reinforce it with pericardium. Then you use extra for all stitches for commissural reinforcement. Compared with the surgical aortic valve, it's a really a surgically demanding procedure. The mean cross coolant time for me is 130 minutes, and for Ozaki, uh, almost around 100. After you, you do the aortic repair with o Ozaki technique, you can check it either with putting a vent in the left atrium and filling with saline or which technique, whichever you want. It, it's a, it can be applied to all sorts of aortic pathologies, regurgitor stenosis, bicuspid or tricuspid valve. The point is that if you are using a bicuspid valve, if you are repairing a bicuspid valve, you have to take a commissure as the reference point for the height and for all sorts of things, as you see here. This is not the case all the time, but this is the most the case we encountered in bicuspid pathology. You convert a bicuspid uh, anatomy into a tricuspid anatomy. So you again draw all tricuspid valves. You measure them, you draw them, you draw the base, you draw the height. Since you have a reference commissure, reference uh, commissure, you can do it easily. After you do that, since we know that Bicuspid pathology is the pathology at the endothelium, and the annulus may keep on uh, enlarging, so it's wise to reinforce the whole procedure with uh, pericardial patch, pericardial strips at the annular level. I go faster, I will show you the... This is how it is it looked uh, at the end of the operation. So, what are the advantages of Ozaki procedure? I mean, glutaral day treated aortic cusp uh, creation with pericardium. It's a biological solution. You know, you don't need to use aspirin after six months. There is no risk of patient protest mismatch and really more durable than uh, commercial available bioprosthesis. It's cheap. This is very important. But it's surgically demanding with a longer cross clamp time. This is the first paper. This is the uh, important paper Ozaki released consists of 600 pa uh, patients, mainly with small aortic annulus. Aortic annulus diameter was average smaller than 20, and the smallest aortic diameter was 14. What can we do uh, with a patient 14 millimeter aortic diameter? You cannot do a conventional nick or manichaean aortic root enlargement. The thing you can only do is conlarastan, which I am not a pediatric cardiac surgeon. I don't know how to do it. So. In that sense, really, Ozaki seems a good uh, option. So the patient uh, was with small aortic annulus. The uh, smallest one is, was 14. And after the operation, after five years, the hemodynamic performance was excellent, smaller than mean gradient with 20 millimeter mercury. So what makes Ozaki that much favorable in terms of hemodynamic performance? First of all, as time passes, pericardial patches imitates the natural valve cusp and they remodels. The second one is, as we all know, at the very early systole, the aortic annulus enlarges, then the aortic cusps open. Ozaki, uh, can I have two more? 
Ozaki just preserve that annular enlargement. In that sense, it is so physio physiologic. You can do it on, in also bicuspid aortic valve. Uh, recently, Ozaki released 10 year results with 800%. The most important thing is that 100 of them was, were with patients hemodialysis. hemodialysis. The results are striking. Survival after 10 years was around 65. The patients of reoperation was no more than 4% after 10 years. And uh, aortic regurg more than moderate was only 7%. So the hemodynamic performance was also excellent after 10 years without any sign of calcification. So this, what's the surgical menu for small aortic root? You can do a superannular mechanical obstantive bioprosthesis, stentless, stentless bioprosthesis. You can do an Ozaki or you can do a mini AVR with Sturlus valve. So we have we surgeons, cardiac surgeons, has to improve our AVR surgical techniques. We have to use more liberal root and enlargement. Dr. Antunes and Schaff from Mayo Clinic, uh, in one of every two cases, enlarged aorta. We have to use more liberal use, stentless aortic prosthesis, and Ozaki is really a good option. Thank you for your attention.